Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be looking at something that often gets asked when I'm running workshops. It's the part of my workflow where we're saving files and we're getting into the post-processing. A lot of people are intrigued that I don't use Lightroom at all, but they're not really confident in using Bridge and Photoshop. So in the video, we're gonna have a quick look at the differences between Lightroom, Bridge and Photoshop, how similar they are, but I'll show you the reasons why I personally like to use Bridge. So let's take a look. Now, a quick disclaimer, guys, I really don't care what software you use. I'm not one of those people that says it has to be this way or no way at all. I just believe in using whatever workflow, whatever program suits you the most. Let me just open up Adobe Bridge now. So what is Adobe Bridge? Bridge is simply a file viewer. It's nothing to do with processing at all. It's just a way for us to view our raw files. The benefit of using Bridge compared to say using just the PC or just the, the back end of your MacBook here, it's a lot neater. We can organize the files, it loads the thumbnails much faster. It shows us the metadata as well. Compared to just trying to view it in the computer itself, it's very limited. What is the benefit of using this over Lightroom? Well, if we open up Lightroom now, the first thing that Lightroom will wanna do is ask us to import something. Now, when they say import, I think a better way to think of that is just giving it permission to read the files from somewhere. So at the moment, it's asking me right now to import something in Lightroom. You'll notice when we go back to Bridge, there was no question there. See, I just simply navigate to my hard drive, the raw files, I pick whatever folder I want, and then I can just start looking at the raw files from here. Uh, when we go to Lightroom though, it's saying, well, hang on, mate, you need to import something. It's very important when you're using Lightroom up the top here, when it comes to importing, it's saying, how do you wanna import? Do you physically wanna drag the files to somewhere else or do you just wanna let Lightroom read the files? And that's what Bridge is doing. So if we say add, add photos to catalog without moving them, that's doing something similar to what Bridge does. Just unfortunate that they kind of have these terminologies like adding and, and catalog, because all I'm gonna do now is navigate to my hard drive, raw, 2024, let's go July. We'll pick that same workshop folder. It automatically selected everything in that folder. So now it's going to give me the option here to bottom right hand corner, import. And this is where it's, it's important to make sure that you're either just adding, which means you're only letting it read from that source, which in my case is my portable hard drive. If you wanna copy and move, you are now gonna move them from one place to another. And that's what you do if you're putting in an SD card and taking them from there and putting them to the hard drive. In our case, we just wanna add, I push import. Now basically Lightroom is getting permission to view all those files straight off the hard drive. Now, if you look at the interface here in Lightroom, there's a lot going on, okay? It's loading the previews now, that's all good. But on the right, we have the metadata and everything like that. On the left, we have the source locations. We have a very small preview panel, but down the bottom, we have all the thumbnails as well. If I chose to start processing something, I push the develop tab and now it goes straight into editing. For me personally, this feels very cluttered and like there's just way too much information being presented. If we go back to bridge, You'll see here that I'm simply viewing the files from the source and I have a large display. And of course in Lightroom, you can change the displays around. It's got nothing to do with editing. It's just saying, hey, here's your raw files. Do you like them? Yes or no? You can delete them, you can rate them, so on and so forth. When it comes time to processing though, we're not processing in Bridge. So if I double click a raw file in Bridge, Photoshop will open up. It's a default program that's linked to Bridge. When Photoshop opens up, look what comes up now. This is Camera Raw, okay? It's still Photoshop, but this is called ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. This is where I start to make my adjustments. And this is where I said earlier, it's almost identical to Lightroom. So thankfully, from a teaching standpoint, it doesn't matter if you're a Lightroom user or you use Camera Raw, it's almost identical, which is great. You'll notice though that when we make adjustments here, if I push done down the bottom right hand corner, it hasn't got rid of the edit. It's now kind of temporarily saved that edit in a similar way that Lightroom creates what they call a catalog. So if we open up Lightroom again, we push develop, we make similar adjustments, bit of brightening, so on and so forth. If I leave that now and go back to the library, 
that image still has that edit apply that kind of temporary what I call like an illusion it's almost not it's not baked into the file at this stage it's just kind of throwing just doing an edit over the top of it what Lightroom will do is basically the memory of that edit it will store in a folder called catalog and when I edit any other file doesn't matter what folder it's from could it be from five years ago could be from the same week all those edits, the memory gets locked into a catalog folder, which can become quite big. And if you lose that, you're in trouble. The difference with Bridge is when you make that edit, it will save the memory of the edit in the same source folder as the raw file. And if I move on to another folder and I make an edit, it'll save it in that individual folder. So all the edits are being locked in wherever the raw is located. Personally, I think that's a way better way of doing things. It just means that if you ever move on to another computer somewhere, you're not trying to drag your whole catalog with you. You just need to have the raw files and there will be the edits saved as well. These little XMP memories of the edit. When it comes to saving and sorting everything, I just use Bridge and that's my way to run through the raw files. If I don't like something, I'll push delete. It's gone for good. If I want to make a short list, like a selection, I'll give it a star rating. And then that way, anything with five stars or whatever I want to give them will be, you know, sorted to the bottom of the pile. I find it very easy to just navigate and use Bridge. There's nothing daunting about it. You simply plug in your hard drive, or if you don't have the RAWs on the hard drive, they're on the computer, you navigate to that folder, you open them up, and away you go. And when you decide that you want to do some post-processing, again, it's just a matter of opening up the RAW. If you want to make some quick adjustments, like so, and now I push done. Well, it's gonna remember that edit pretty quickly. If you wanna export it to be a, a separate file, which I recommend you do for anything that's your portfolio, then you can open up, you can even export right from here, but typically myself, I'll open up into the main part of Photoshop, and from here I'll just file, save as, and I'll save it as a PSD file, you can do it a TIFF file, and that's it. So then I'll have my RAWs, and then once it's edited, I open up here, save it as a PSD. So you can see there's no need for Lightroom in this workflow at all. So why do people use Lightroom? They kind of designed it, especially going back when they first created it. It was a way to simplify Photoshop and just give photographers the basics. As time has gone on, they've made it, you know, really functional. There's so much in here that you can do that you couldn't do back in the day. You still can't, however, do focus stacking or blending of exposures if you need to, you know, do an exposure blend for dynamic range or like I said, focus stacking. So chances are you may be a Lightroom user, but you still need to right click and then open in Photoshop to do your focus stacking and blending. You can see how similar the programs are. There's just some subtle differences between the two. Is there any right or wrong? No, there's not. It's just personal preference. So hopefully here you can see why, again, if you're someone like me that started off using Bridge and Photoshop, why would there ever be a point where you said, okay, I'm gonna use Lightroom now? There's just absolutely no need because like I said, we can do everything via Bridge for the viewing and moving and storage side of things. The post-processing can be done all here in Photoshop and ACR and then we simply save from there to wherever the destination is that you wanna save as a higher res file, like a TIFF or a PSD. And that's it for the workflow. So hopefully that kind of clears up some of the differences. And I mainly am showing this video because I just have had so many people over the years kind of have a misconception about Bridge, thinking that Bridge was an editing software, when in fact it's not. But also having a misconception and even a bit of a fear when it comes to Photoshop, thinking that in order to process in Photoshop, you need to know how to build up multiple layers and do this stuff that seems complicated, but in reality, you just don't um, because they've made the functionality so good in Camera Raw, being able to make adjustments, check out any of my other processing videos here on YouTube, you'll see that you know being a Photoshop user does not require multiple layers, which once upon a time was the only way but now we can do our layering and all our adjustments basically here in camera raw part of Photoshop, which just makes life so much easier. So very similar, just use whatever feels best to you. If you have any questions at all, if you want me to go into anything more specific, just let me know in the comments, but hopefully this clears things up. Adobe Bridge and Photoshop doesn't really matter, but 
the main thing is the more you're doing this, the easier it's gonna get. So don't chop and change and jump around too much because you're just gonna get frustrated because it's all unfamiliar. My biggest advice is to just find one that seems to be the right fit for you. Just start using it and as time goes on, it'll get easier and easier.